Greetings, everybody. Get out your King James Bible and turn to the 38th chapter of the book of Genesis. Cha Genesis chapter 38. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is the continuation of the tabernacle series uh, there were a number of colors that were used for the tabernacle. All the colors have meanings in the Bible. The first one we did was blue. Now we're going to do scarlet. Scarlet is a very deep red color. Matter of fact, the communist flag of Russia was scarlet colored color of blood and the communist shed a great deal of blood all right let's get started here generally not always but generally the bible when it has the first time that a word appears in the king james anyways uh, usually in the context, it gives you an idea of what the meaning of the word or phrase is. So quite oftentimes, it is very useful to look at the first time a word or a phrase appears. Now in Genesis 38, we're going to start in verse Genesis 38 and verse 28. Uh, let me give you a little background. Judah uh, married a Canaanite woman and had three sons. They were the satanic half-breeds. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, stop right here, go to my, click on my name, go to my playlist on the home page, and then look up the angels that sinned and go, to, and go study that for about five or six hours until you understand what happened in Genesis 6. The sons of God in Job 38 and Genesis 6 refer to the fallen angels. The sons of God married the daughters of men in Genesis 6, and then they had giants for children. But the churches want you to believe that the sons of God were all the righteous men, all the men were righteous, and then the daughters of men uh, the daughters of men were all the women, and they were wicked. So all the guys were righteous, and all the women were wicked. And then they got married, the righteous men with the wicked women, and then they had giants for children. And that's what the churches want you to believe. I don't think so. In Job 38, the sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. Adam was not created until six days after the foundation of the earth. How could, how could uh, the sons of God be Adam kind men shouting for joy before they even existed? No, they were angels, people. Use a little bit of logic. Okay? But the deal is, Ju Judah married a Canaanite woman, at least one, and had three kids, three boys, and God killed two of them because they were wicked. That's how bad they were. God killed them. So the third one was supposed to get, uh, well, the first one married this girl, and God killed him. The second one was to marry this girl because that's what would happen if, if, if a man married a woman and he died, uh, the brother was supposed to marry her and carry on the family name. Well, he was wicked too, so God killed him. Judah knew the jig was up, and, and he didn't want to give the third son to this woman because, well, you know, third time's a charm, right? So he basically uh, didn't want her to get married to the third evil, wicked, half-breed, satanic, seed-line son. So um, she had a little, hatched up a little plot, and she knew where he was going, and then she uh, put, uh, 
put on a harlot's outfit. Uh, that was probably a very seductive, uh, I don't know, clothing that revealed a lot. Didn't leave much to the imagination, but she covered her face with a veil. So he showed her her body, but not her face. And uh, he saw that and he says, hmm, I like that. I want some of that. So he didn't bring enough money. So he gave her his staff and scepter as a pledge. And then uh, when he returned to the same spot, after he had done the dirty deed and got her pregnant, um, he was going to pay her and get his, his staff and scepter back, but uh, she wasn't there. So a few months go by. They figure out she's pregnant. And they said, hey, your daughter-in-law is pregnant. And she doesn't have a husband, so she's been playing the whore. So Judah says, well, let, let her be burnt. You know, we're going to burn this whore. So out she comes, and she says, see this staff and this scepter? This is the man by whom I am with child. So Judah looks at it, acknowledges, yep, she's uh, pregnant with my child. And uh, he didn't touch her after that. She had twins. So we're going to read this. I'm just giving you the quick version because I don't want to make this a, an hour study. I mean, we're just doing one color. So, Genesis 38, 28. And it came to pass when she travailed, you know, she's giving birth, that the one put out his hand and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread, a scarlet thread. Now remember, Judah was the tribe to be the tribe of the kings. So this red signified royalty. Well, so does purple. They're both royal colors. So she put upon his hand a scarlet thread saying, this came out first. Okay. Um, the firstborn was to be given a double portion for the inheritance of his father because it was their responsibility to take care of the parents instead of, you know, the career and all that kind of stuff. He was to get a double portion. The Lord That was called the Lord's blessing, the first blessing of the firstborn. I was my father's firstborn. And the Bible said that the uh, firstborn always belonged to the Lord. So maybe that's why I'm where I am. I don't know. But uh, oftentimes the firstborn was to be a sacrifice unto the Lord. Uh, in Egypt, what did the Lord kill of the Egyptians in the plague of the Passover? All the firstborn. All the firstborn animals, all the firstborn children of the families of Egypt, except for those that had the blood, which is scarlet, above the doorpost and the lintel. Think about that. And somebody pointed out to me that um, when you put it on the doorpost and on the lintel, made the sign of a cross. Isn't that interesting? All right, so... Uh, the hand broke forth from her, uh, and they put a scarlet thread upon it, okay? This came out first, 29. And it came to pass, as he drew back his hand, that, behold, his brother came out, and she said, How hast thou broken forth? This breach be upon thee. Therefore his name was called Pharez. And afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his hand, and his name was called Zerah. All right, so, uh, red, royalty, right? Now, a scarlet robe was placed upon Jesus as in mockery 
in Matthew 27 and verse 28. So let's read that real quick. Yeah, Matthew 27 and um, uh, let's see. Where am I going to start reading from? Hold on a second here. All right. Um, let's start. Let's read Matthew 27 and verse 17. Make it that 15. Now at the feast, the governor was wont to release another people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife, Pilate's wife, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? Have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Boy, I would have loved to have heard that story. I would have absolutely loved to sit down with Pilate's wife and heard what that dream was. Verse 20, but the chief priests, not the Catholic priests, like the uh, churches are going to try to tell you. No, no, these are Jewish priests. These aren't anything to do with the Vatican. Vatican doesn't exist and won't exist for several hundred years. Contrary to what the lying preachers and churches teach. Verse 20, but the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Oh, wait, but I've always been taught that it was uh, Rome that killed Jesus. Uh, well, you were lied to, buddy boy. Verse 21, the governor answered and said unto them, Whither of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but rather a tumult was made, all right, that's like a riot. He took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. See, it wasn't Pilate. Pilate didn't want to kill Jesus. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And put on him a scarlet robe. See, scarlet was the one of the colors of royalty. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, oh yeah, scarlet robe, crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment upon on him and led him away to crucify him. Oh yeah. Yeah, it wasn't the, the Mus uh wasn't wasn't the Muslims and it wasn't the Catholics and it wasn't Rome that wanted Christ crucified people. Okay? Let's take a look at more scarlet. In Daniel five sixteen. Now remember, Nebuchadnezzar's son was drinking wine out of the cups of the Lord's temple. 
And then a hand wrote some writings on the wall. You ever heard that expression, the writing on the wall? It comes right from the Bible. It's amazing how much of our culture comes from the Bible. Well, if you went to Africa and said, oh, the writing's on the wall, they'd be looking around going, what are you talking about? I don't see any writing. You know, it doesn't mean anything to them. Because it's not their book. So, they call for Daniel because he had interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And this is what the king, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the king of Babylon, said to him, to Daniel, I have heard of thee that thou, can make, that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now, if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet, yeah, I know it's a woman's name, but we're not talking about being clothed with a woman here. Thou shalt be clothed with scarlet, and have a chain of gold about thy neck, and thou shalt be the thir third ruler in the kingdom. So the king's one. I don't know who's number two. Maybe the queen, I'm not sure, or somebody else. But Daniel would have been the third highest person, the ruler in the kingdom. And they were going to clothe him with scarlet. So keep that in mind. Now, what else about scarlet? Well, in uh, Exodus 25, what were the colors of the, of the tabernacle? Verse 25, 4. And blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair. Exodus 26, 1. Moreover, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet and cherubims of cunning work. Thou shalt make them. Exodus 26, 31. And thou shalt make a veil, a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen of cunning work with cherubims shall it be made. Okay, you get the idea? All right, now, well, what else is, uh, everybody loves to tell you that the, the woman riding the beast is the Vatican. They love to tell you that. Well, yeah, the Vatican did copy those colors, and those were the colors of the tabernacle. But let's read Revelation 17, verse 3. So he carried me, carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman, I saw a woman, a whore, right? The whore. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. Scarlet-colored beast. Full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Precious stones. Do you know that the breastplate of the high priest was uh, the stones, the same stones that were uh, mentioned in the Bible for the um, foundation of the New Jerusalem? And pearls. What, what about pearls? Well, the pearls were to be the doors for the 12 doors leading into New Jerusalem for the doors. So, you know. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Ah. Revelation eighteen sixteen And saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. All right, let's take a look at pearls real quick. All right, so basically this is mimicking uh, Revelation 21 that's talking about the New Jerusalem. Uh, and the 12 gates were 12 pearls. 
Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. All right, I'm going to end this Bible study right here. I'm going to do another one on the um, the breastplate with the uh, the stones, the precious stones, like the emerald and what have you, uh, amethyst, carbuncle, and uh, they were to represent. Each stone was to represent a different tribe of Israel, and the Levitical priest Aaron was to have wear the breastplate. And then I'm going to tie that into where it is in the book of Revelation. And uh, it won't be too long of a Bible study. I'm going to break these up into small, smaller groups so that uh, it makes it easier to find on uh, during searches. Instead of putting all the colors together, I'll just do a short one on blue, a short one on scarlet, a short one on purple, um, white, don't don't oh boy the black hebrews are going to hate my uh the white study <laughs> so yeah uh and then they love to tell you oh you're not white well black sure ain't white i'll tell you that so all right all blessings praise glory and honor to god the father and his only begotten son jesus who is the christ the lamb of god slain from the foundation of the world all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.